Hey guys, today I want to talk about the Stormgate units. And let's start off with the biological units of the Vanguard. Now, Vanguard are most similar to Terran from StarCraft 1 and StarCraft 2. Uh, and biological units, also known as bio, uh, generally refers to units made out of the barracks, which is exactly what we're going to be talking about here from Stormgate. So let's start off first with the Scout, since you start with one uh, in every single game as Vanguard. The Scout is actually very similar to Scout Cavalry from Age of Empires 2. Well, you start with it. Uh, it's very fast. It's great for scouting the map out. It can do some light harassment, but doesn't really beat anything by itself. Uh, it's great for picking up small bonuses around the map. It's extremely fast. It's, uh, you know, you can do a little bit of harassment of like bobs and imps and stuff like that. Uh, and it's very cheap and builds quickly. So you can actually mass it quite easily indeed. Uh, also, similar to the Scout Cavalry, you can upgrade it through the game and actually make it a little bit stronger for those later portions of the game if you want to continue to use Scouts. So the Scout definitely has some very specific roles, a very fast unit, a very fun unit, uh, and one I think that we're going to be seeing a lot of. Moving on next, we have the Lancer. The Lancer is kind of a cross between the Firebat and the Zealot. Uh, it's pretty beefy frontline melee unit, uh, but it has an area of effect damage in a straight line. It's not a big wide cone like the Firebat has. Uh, so it's especially good at dealing with masses of other melee units, right? If there's like multiple melee units in front of it, uh, it's going to deal extra damage to those, which is very, very helpful. Uh, now, the Lancer has an upgrade called the Kinetic Redirection. This makes it so that whenever the Lancer is hit, it increases its attack and movement speed by 5% for 5 seconds. And that's up to a grand total of 50%. Uh, so if it's hit 10 times within those 5 seconds, you're going to have all of that boost together. Now, this makes the Lancer somewhat opposite of the StarCraft II Zealot. The StarCraft II Zealot with the charge upgrade will speed up while it's attacking. The Lancer will speed up while it's being attacked. This upgrade makes the Lancers very mobile and strong units during the heat of a battle. Uh, and it can be used similarly to StarCraft 1 Zealots with the speed upgrade as far as maneuverability goes. Up next we have the Exo. The Exo is very similar to Marines from StarCraft 1 or 2. Uh, it has a ranged attack that hits ground and air. Uh, and obviously is a very versatile addition to your army. The Exo has an upgrade called Quick Draw Hustle. This upgrade activates after the Exo attacks something, increasing 25% movement speed for two seconds. It allows for heavy micro, similar to using the stim upgrade like in StarCraft 1 or StarCraft 2. There are some key differences from the stim upgrade though. Uh, the Exo doesn't get an attack speed bonus and it doesn't lose health. It also must keep attacking to maintain that movement speed bonus. So while Stim is normally a yes or no decision, Quick Draw Hustle has more to do with player execution in a given scenario. Then we have the Med Tech. The Med Tech is similar to StarCraft 1's Medic, but a bit more useful. Uh, firstly, it has its own attack, so it's really never useless in a battle. It also has Adept and Master Training. The Adept Training increases the Med Tech's energy restoration and unlocks Nano Swarm. Nano Swarm casts a healing aura on a friendly mechanical unit or a lighter area of effect damage aura on an enemy mechanical unit. The Master Training unlocks System Shock, which will remove positive buffs from enemy units or remove debuffs while increasing movement speed a bit uh, for friendly units. You can kind of think of it as a better version of the StarCraft 1 Medic's restoration ability. Let's talk some about the worker unit for Vanguard, the Bob. Bobs are very similar to SCVs from the StarCraft world. They build structures, mine resources, and repair things. They do have a bit more complexity to them than an SCV though. Similar to Age of Empires, you can use multiple Bobs to build a single structure. This will speed up the structure's build time and adds an interesting balance to economy versus speed. There's also an ability on the command post, which is similar to the command center from StarCraft II but doesn't fly, 
called Bob Overcharge. This will strengthen your bobs in the immediate area for a limited time, making them more sturdy and able to defend themselves. Now let's talk about the mechanical units, also known as mech units, for the Vanguard and Stormgate. Mech units are made out of the tier 2 structure, the mech bay. First up, we have the Hedgehog. The Hedgehog has the fastest base speed in the game, and you can feel it. Its high responsiveness and quick hit and run abilities are reminiscent of the Vulture in StarCraft 1. There are a lot of differences though. It shoots one to four missiles in quick succession, but then has to wait for a period to reload these missiles. This makes player activity with the Hedgehog extremely important. It should almost never be sitting still. It's all about the hit and run. The Hedgehog is fantastic at maintaining map control in the early portions of the game due to its ability to outmicro all the other early game units. In StarCraft 1, the Vulture is known for being terrible at destroying buildings or larger units, but being excellent at destroying lighter units like Zerglings, Zealots, and Marines. The Hedgehog is just the opposite. Its damage acts more as a large burst, being fantastic at assaulting buildings and eliminating larger units. The Hedgehog also hits both air and ground, and has an ability that you can upgrade called Hunker Down. Hunker Down turns the Hedgehog into a stationary anti-air unit similar to a missile turret. This greatly increases its anti-air range and gives it a faster ammo recharge. This will root the Hedgehog in place and eliminate its ground attack, so use with caution. Next, we have the Vulcan. The Vulcan is a very important mid-tier tech unit bridging the gap between the speed and maneuverability of the Hedgehog and the slow sieging power of the Atlas. Honestly, I'm not really sure if there are any RTS units to compare the Vulcan to. None come to mind for me, and it really kind of feels like its own thing. The Vulcan is not particularly fast, but it is quite strong. It is a chain gun that takes some time to spin up, but does a cone of area of effect damage, which is perfect for taking down large groups of light units like fiends. The Vulcan also has an upgrade called Jump Jets. The Jump Jets make the Vulcan dash forward, dealing damage and stunning an enemy for a short time. These jets can also knock down trees to quickly clear a path in or out of closed areas of the map. Last for the mech units, we have the Atlas. The Atlas is very similar to StarCraft 1 and StarCraft 2's Siege Tank. It isn't particularly fast or strong while mobile, but once you deploy its BFG mode, its range and damage both increase by four times or more. Unlike StarCraft Siege Tanks, you can target ground to fire upon. Because the Atlas's shot is not an instant guaranteed hit like Siege Tanks, this might become an important tactic as the game evolves. The Atlas also has an upgrade called Plasma Arc Infusion. This makes the Atlas's attacks set the ground on fire for an additional area of effect damage on that ground for a limited time. And one more thing, remember Tank Evax from StarCraft II? The Atlas can be transported in an evac while in its sieged mode to greatly increase its potential damage both in battles and during harassment. Lastly, let's talk about Vanguard's air units. These are the flying units made out of the hangar bay. First up is the Hornet. This is a relatively fast flying unit that hits both air and ground. It reminds me a little bit of the StarCraft 1 Wraith. It's mobile, but ultimately you don't really want to fight any anti-air ground units with it. The Hornet has an interesting ability which you can activate that sends it back to the closest hangar bay. Once you hit this ability, it can't be stopped. The Hornet will increase in speed greatly, go towards the nearest hangar bay, and stay there until it's fully healed. There is also an ability called Sky Mine, which deals area of effect damage and slows enemy air units. Next is the Evac. The Evac is basically the StarCraft 1 dropship. Unlike the StarCraft 1 dropship though, the Evac has a movement speed upgrade. This will help it to get in and out of dangerous situations a lot faster. Lastly is the Sentinel. The Sentinel both looks and feels like a science vessel from StarCraft 1. The Pulse Inhibitor ability slows enemies by 50% for a short period while stunning mech units for the same time. The Sentinel Adept upgrade increases energy regeneration and unlocks the Haste Bot Dispersal Aura. The Aura increases the speed of ground units by 20%. Lastly, 
we have the Sentinel Master Augmentation upgrade. This also increases the energy regeneration and unlocks Nano Defense Bubble. The Nano Defense Bubble gives a 50% damage reduction. Think of it like the StarCraft II's Sentry ability, Guardian Shield. So that's all of the units in Stormgate so far for the Vanguard. Uh, hope that you've enjoyed watching my takes on these videos and the units that they kind of resemble from some other RTS games. I always find it really useful to look at new RTSs like this to just have a base understanding start. Obviously, these units will evolve and change over time and aren't exactly like their counterparts in other games, but I hope that this has helped you out a little bit. Uh, if you have any other questions or thoughts, please do leave comments down below and I'll try to get back to you. Thanks for watching and good luck in Stormgate.